Hey guys, and welcome to the very first episode of the Stanographer video blog. Um, I guess the purpose of my video blog is to kind of discuss and answer questions on topics relating to court reporting, stenography, captioning, and stuff of that sort. Because I just don't really see a lot of people posting videos about our profession, so I guess I'm taking the initiative. Um, but a brief introduction to myself, my name is Stan Sakai, I'm 24 years old and I live in Seattle, Washington. Um, I graduated from the University of Washington in linguistics, but as of October 2012, I am a Washington State licensed court reporter. So, having said that, I don't actually do a lot of court reporting. I mainly do CART, and I'm also a broadcast captioner. So, those are my credentials. Um, if you do, however, know of any legal work in the Seattle area, please do let me know because I may be interested. My contact info is down there. So, getting on to the main topic of this video, um, I get lots of emails and messages on Facebook regarding machines I use. So, the two machines I use are the Lightspeed by Stenovations, and the other one is the Infinity Ergo, or Infinity Ergonomic. So I'm just going to kind of go through both of the machines, like kind of pro and con. The first machine that I mentioned is the Lightspeed by Stenovations. As you can see, it's super light, and there's really not much to it. It's almost just like kind of a keyboard. Um, there's a little port in the back right here, and you can stick a SD card in it for a backup, but that's pretty much it. The number one question that I get from students and reporting, or working reporters alike is how's the touch on this machine like? Was it hard to transition from, you know, the traditional lever machine or, you know, how long did it take you? So I, I don't know how much of an authority I am on that topic just because I did start with the light speed so early, but I would say that if you generally are a pounder, I don't, I don't know, some people use that term, but it means that when you're writing you press down really hard and sometimes can actually hear the keys like hitting the bottom of the stroke. Um, I would probably say that's not a good sign if you wanted to switch to the light speed. If you think you can train to train yourself to like write, write very lightly with barely any touch, then I think you might have a chance with this machine. As far as operating it, the keys are so sensitive that you just barely touch it. You don't you don't press down at all and it registers so um, if you like to rest your hands like in home position to wait for the speaker to start talking again, you can't really do that on this machine. Um, there is a function called timeout, I think, or timeout delay. And that basically, you can tell the computer to ignore if you're pressing down on the keys for more than an X number of seconds. So one, two, that means I'm putting my hands on and then the next stroke I write registers normally. But I don't think they make this one new anymore. This one, last time I checked yesterday, goes for about two grand on the Stenovations website as a refurbished machine. <laughs> um, so the pros of the machine, I guess, is it's super lightweight. Like, this is tiny. I think my ThinkPad might be bigger than this. So I really like this because I do a lot of on-site cart for the University of Washington. So, you know, I, I'll have eight minutes to go from like this side of campus all the way to this side and, you know, I have to like, you know, tear down really fast and then run to the other class and sometimes I don't even turn my computer off, I just have everything connected. So I just get to the class, you know, whip out my laptop and I, immedi I immediately just start writing again. So yeah, there's the portability factor. So like this machine, I actually carried around in this little case. Um, it's like the it's a laptop sleeve by Spec. It was originally made for the 13-inch MacBook Pro. But as you can see, I can just stick it right in like that. And then on my normal cart jobs, this is all I take. So I just stick this in here, and then my laptop goes in, and then I even have my tray table, and I stick my tripod on the side. So, super lightweight and portable. Another thing I like is that you can write it without deploying a tripod. So, um, the, the back of the machine has these little like rubber grippy stickers. So you can put it on your lap and it doesn't slide around. You can also use a tripod with it, which for which Stenovations makes a custom rig. Um, I didn't want to pay the hundred dollars, so I made my own. But. I don't know, you're probably interested, but basically what I did was I took one of the adapters from my old Gemini machines and I screwed it onto this like 
particle board. Get it off. So that it looks like that. So as you can see, I have little Velcro pads right here, right here. Yeah, I have. I might have an inappropriate sticker on there, but oh well. Um, but this just fits right on here like that. And then this part, stick it on your normal stenograph tripod. Of course, it's gonna work on camera. There you go. And now it's stuck on there, and you can just write it like a normal tripod machine. The other machine that I use is the Infinity Traditional Ergonomic Machine. Um, the cool thing about this machine is that it has two sides. So if you look at this configuration, it split down the middle through the asterisk key. So this, these two are asterisks, and these two are asterisks. Um, um, so the cool thing about this machine is if you're ever at a job where you're writing for, you know, five, six, seven, eight hours, and, you know, you start getting tightness in your wrists and your arms, you can move these two components any which way. Like, I could write like this if I wanted to and it'll lock it in place and you, you're now using an entirely different set of muscles. Super nice. The other thing I really like about this machine is the customizability of it. Um, basically there's a, there's this screw on top right there that controls the tension of the keys. So basically how hard you have to press. I have it tightened all the way because I, 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 like, my or I, I like my touch super light. Um, the other way you can adjust it is by using this little Allen wrench that it comes with. And deep down inside the keys, you probably can't see, so I'm not going to bother. There's like a little screw that you turn that kind of raises up or um, lowers the bottom, the bottom portion of the keys or the bottom stroke bottom. Yeah. But I have it super. I had a bit set super light, so like you can see. I don't know if you can tell, but that's all you have to press to get the key to register. So, I can get it basically as shallow as the light speed, um, but it does have a little bit more of a tactile feedback to it, but I think the main thing would be getting used to the two halves, which I really don't have a problem because I switch off between these two machines every single day, so, you know, people are like, oh, how long did it take you to get used to it? I'm like, uh, a couple hours. <laughs> so, I guess everyone's different. My best advice to you would be to, if you can, try out the machines before you buy them. Um, if you're in the Seattle area, you could always contact me and you can try it out or, you know, I guess at a convention. But I bought the Lightspeed without having tried it and it worked out just fine for me, so it might be different for you. So I would recommend you trying it out first. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I really have to say about those two machines. Like, I really have no problem with either of them. One thing that's cool about the Infinity machine, you can actually get like a pressure by time graph that's moving through time. So you can press down a key and see the activation threshold spike. And you know, if you're weak on a pinky, you can see, oh, it's because it's not quite reaching the, the threshold on the graph. And you can either lower that, raise that, recalibrate it, and it's super easy to spot exactly how you're registering the keys and how like sensitive they are, I don't know. But um, the Lightspeed also has a similar function. It's all software based though, so obviously there's no like tightening of any screws. It doesn't quite have the fine level of detail you can get with the Infinity software. Um, it's basically just kind of a digit. You just kind of press it and then see what number it registers at. And then you just either raise it or lower it depending on um, whether you can tend to press it harder or it's softer, but there's none of the graphs and you can't see any of the real-time data really, you can only kind of look at the pressures, but there's like an output file with the pressures for a job, I don't even, I never used it, so I don't know. But yeah, those are the two machines and if you have any more questions for me, you can either write them down in the comment section below, or you can email me directly, or I don't know, you can post a video response. We need more stenos on YouTube. I hope that was helpful, and so yeah, I hope you watch my future videos and let me know what I'm doing.